So this weekend we have some crunch games coming up in Gaelic football. We have a Connacht football final between Mayo and Galway. We have two crunch games in Ulster between Donegal Armagh and Down and Cavan. And of course, two games in Leinster as well. Dublin Leash, Mead Kildare. And in this video we will be previewing all the games, talking about all the big talking points coming up in today's video. What's the story everyone, it's Aaron here from GA Fan TV. I'm back again of course with another match preview and today we'll be looking at yeah all the big games coming up this weekend in Gaelic football. I will also make one of these videos for hurling as well so that'll be out tomorrow so stay tuned for that. And yeah look listen I mean five big games this weekend and after a crazy weekend of football you know and the weekend just gone. All of a sudden now, you know, you're looking at these matches coming up here and they, they sort of have a bit more importance to them now that Kerry aren't in the championship. You know, I think everyone kind of had Kerry as a, you know, if you didn't have Kerry winning the All-Ireland, you did at least have them as favourites. You know, they were going to probably make a semi-final. They were probably going to make a final. Um, it was up for debate whether they, they won it or not or whether they would have won it or not had they have beaten Cork, etc, etc. But look, listen. We're not going to talk about Kerry anymore because, well, they're not in the championship. But anyway, there are other games going on and there are other teams going on. So we'll start with the Ulster Championship because that is, for me, probably the most interesting um, province, really. It's the most entertaining province, maybe not in terms of football play, but in terms of, you know, you're not going to get landslided victories. Or, you know, Dublin Leash, for example, is probably going to be a walkover. Don't think we're going to see that. In Ulster, and I'm I'm particularly interested with Donegal Armagh. And look, listen, I've kind of got the Armagh colours on. I mean, this looks red to me, but in the camera it looks orange. So I don't know. I mean, may, maybe I'm half Armagh now. I don't know. But Donegal Armagh, Donegal for me, I think you know they have experience winning these games. You know, they 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 know what it takes to get through Ulster. Uh, they've done it two years in a row now, and when they played Toronto, I was very impressed with them. Like they. They're, they're just a very experienced team, um, you know, with the likes of Michael Murphy in there, Michael Langan, Kieran Thompson. They just know how to get the job done. And Armagh, on the other hand, are a little bit inexperienced for me. Although they do have a seriously talented forward line with the likes of Rian O'Neill, Jamie Clark, Stefan Campbell in behind. And Oshin O'Neill has proved to be a very talented midfielder as well, you know, hitting two points in the last game versus Derry. But I think Donegal physically are just a way more stronger than Armagh. I think they'll win the midfield battle and I think they'll be stronger going forward as well. I think with Armagh, you know, one of their big criticisms, you know, in the past while has been they start games very well in the first half, but in the second half they fade quite a lot. I do think physically they're not quite at the level of some of the other teams in Ulster. I actually think that's why Armagh have been caught in Ulster in the past couple of years is because they're not like the other traditional teams in Ulster you know normally in Ulster teams are very defensive they sit back they're very physical they play sweeper whilst Armagh do blend the two at times you know they do play defensive a little bit sometimes they are more attacking and you can see why you know they've got Rian O'Neill one of the best forwards in the country Jamie Clark on his day is unstoppable Rory Grugan very talented as well you know you've seen how good he was in that game versus Derry you've Connor Turbot coming through as well and he could cause a lot of problems for Donegal and I think for Donegal this will be a different kind of problem in this game versus Tyrone because Tyrone you know they are more of a physical team a bit like Donegal in that sense and although Tyrone do have some serious seriously talented forwards you know with the likes of Connor McKenna in there I think we've seen that when Donegal took Connor McKenna out of the game that you know, realistically, Tyrone just didn't quite have the same options up top as they would have in, in, in other games, for example. And I think with Armagh, that's going to be the interesting point because, yes, you can put a man on Rian O'Neill and Jamie Clark, but there are still other forwards around there like Stefan Campbell and maybe Connor Turbot, if he starts, could cause problems as well. So it's going to be interesting. And how do Armagh stop Donegal's forward line? How do they stop the likes of Michael Murphy, Michael Langan, Kieran Thompson and Patrick McBurthy? If McBurthy comes back into the team... How do uh, Armagh stop that forward line? I mean, you're looking at Aiden Forker. Will he pick up Michael Murphy? Um, Aiden Forker, probably one of the best defenders in the country so far this year. Anyway, in the championship, he's done a really good job. He's also contributed to the attack brilliantly as well. I would expect Stephen McManaman to probably pick up Rian O'Neill. You know, he he done a great job on on uh, Conor McKenna in the last game, so he'll probably pick up um you know Rian O'Neill in this game and if he does the same kind of job that he done on McKenna 
I, you know, Rian O'Neill will probably have a, a quiet game, but I think Rian O'Neill is a different proposition. I don't want to start comparing the two because McKenna's on, he hasn't been back in Ireland that long, but I think Rian O'Neill, physically probably not as strong as Conor McKenna, uh, talent-wise, you know, hard, hard to compare at this moment in time. I'd say they're probably on par in terms of, uh, you know, free-taking, in terms of kicking points. Um, maybe Conor McKenna just physically that bit stronger and he's able to kind of, you know, shake off challenges that bit more easy. But we'll have to kind of wait and see. If Armagh are going to do anything in the game, they're going to rely on the influence of Ushin O'Neill. But to be perfectly honest, I see Donegal winning this game. I think they'll have too much for Armagh. I think in the midfield, they'll be a little bit more stronger. I would expect Michael Murphy to drift around the half forward line like he always does and cause a lot of problems for Armagh. It will be difficult for Donegal, but I do see them coming out on top by three points in the end. And then you'd have Down and Cavan. To be honest, I cannot split these two. Um, like er Everything points towards a Cavan victory, but I actually think Down are going to cause a, a little bit of a surprise here, and I say it's a surprise because... I don't know, it's not really a surprise, you know, down are going into Division 2, Count or Cavan are going down into Division 3, um, and will Cavan have run out of steam at this point, you know, they'll have, they'll have played four intense games, down have really only played two games because the game versus Loud, they sent, you know, a second string team, you know, Cavan in that game versus Antrim, you know, I watched the first half and they really struggled, Antrim were very defensive, very dogged, they made it difficult and you know, Cavan really needed to win that game quite comfortably just so they could rest players and think more to the down game. But in the end, they really had to work against Antrim. And having played four games in a row, you know, having battling relegation, come through Monaghan in extra time, they might just have ran out of steam in this game. But look, you can't look past some of their, you know, top players. Geroid McKernan at centre forward, really good player, you know, looked very good against Antrim, probably the man of the match. Raymond Galligan has been maybe the goalkeeper in the of the year in the championship so far. You know, some top saves against Monaghan, made one or two saves against Antrim as well. His kickouts have been fantastic as well. And obviously, you know, he, he's able to hit 45s. Um, and of course, Martin Riley, Ushin Kiernan, Ushin Pearson as well. You know, you'd expect them, if Kevin Hart to come through this game, to make a difference and to, to really impress. Would Thomas Galligan be in line for a start? I mean, that's another big question as well, isn't it? Because he didn't start the last two games, came off the bench against Monaghan and was fantastic. So could he start in this game as well? It's interesting to know. Um, but I do just have a sneaky feeling down are going to win this, you know. They looked very impressive versus Fermanagh. They really dealt with that challenge very professionally and very well. They're kind of an underrated team in many ways, in my opinion. You know, Caelan Mooney in midfield, really good. Like, was very impressed with him in the game versus Fermanagh. Very good at dominating the ball. Can kick a couple of points as well. Intricate play and build-up as well. He was getting involved. Donald O'Hare, very good in the forwards for, for Down. You know, he had a very good league campaign. Was one of the big influences for them getting promotion to Division 2. Um, and then you're looking at Barry O'Hagan, Jerome Johnston as well. They've been very bright as well for Down. And I have a sneaky feeling they're going to catch Cavan out here and win it by a point. I would even say this could even go to extra time. And look, listen, if Cavan weren't playing those four games back-to-back, -back, four intense games, I might be more inclined to go with a Cavan victory. But I just have a sneaky feeling Down are going to catch Cavan out here and make the final. And then you move across to Leinster and you've got Dublin versus Leash and... Yeah, I mean, I do expect this to be Dublin's easiest game of the season. I, I, I do expect that Westmead will have been a tougher challenge for Dublin in that sense. And the reason I say that is because, you know, the Westmead game wasn't at Crow Park. It was the first game of the championship. And I do think Westmead are just a slightly better team than Leash. A little bit better defensively. More established forwards in like John Heslin. And I would expect Dublin to win this very comfortably. Um, this could be a bit of a bloodbath, I'm not going to lie. Like, this could be a 15 to 20 point victory. If Leash are going to do anything, you know, you're looking at Paul Walsh and Paul Kingston as their real top players. I mean, Paul Walsh hit eight in that game versus Longford, seven of them were from Freeze. Uh, Paul Kingston, you know, he's a very physical player. Um, he's a tough player to knock off the ball. I would expect Johnny Cooper to pick him up, and that'll be an interesting battle. You know, if, if Leash are going to make this game somewhat respectable, they're going to need to get Kingston more involved in the game, and they're going to need need he's going to need to give Johnny Cooper a tough time. But it's just hard to see how Leash really do anything here. In all honesty, um, they'll need to move the ball quickly. You know, I, I do think the one way you can get at Dublin is when you win the ball back. You need to move it quickly. You know, you need to just quickly find your man in the half forward line, 
hit it up and because there will be spaces there and and you know there, there there are times where Dublin are a little bit vulnerable a little bit defensively in that sense but the problem is because they're so good going forward that if you leave spaces in behind you know the game could be over so it, it's going to be interesting to see how they approach it for Dublin more game time maybe for Paddy Small you know he's come more into the team this year um, and interestingly enough, you know, uh, there was an interview, of course, after the game from, from Desi Farrell, and he actually said that the players who missed out on the panel for that Westmead game might struggle to get back in. So, you know, you're looking at the likes of Paul Mannion, who wasn't involved in the Westmead game. You know, I don't know if he's injured or haven't seen anything, so that was a bit of a surprise. Uh, Philly McMahon, Michael Darren McCauley, and Kevin McManaman all not involved in that game. Now, you can understand it in terms of no in terms of leaving those players out because maybe you know Desi Farrell is looking more towards the future and I think Dublin are in a more privileged position in their province in the fact that they are the best team in the country playing in the weakest province so they can rest their more experienced players and give younger players like Tom Lahiff and David Byrne a chance to come into the team so yeah look listen Dublin for me they're going to win this game very comfortably you know you're looking at probably 10 to 15 points and it could even be more in all honesty and then you got Kildare and Mead and are Mead well and truly back you know I mean they beat Wicklow 7 what 7 14 to 7 points you know you don't want to jump too far ahead though it was a very impressive victory a 28 point win over Wicklow very impressive stuff for Mead they're definitely in a great place right now but I don't think we should jump the gun and say that Mead are back and Mead are this and Mead are that. Because in all honesty, they could lose this game to Kildare and there'd be massive questions asked of Mead's management and all of a sudden, all their good work that they've done will be for nothing. So this is a massive game for Mead. Uh, their biggest game of the season, in my opinion. You know, Are they Dublin's toughest challenger challengers in Leinster You know, since going back to 2011-2012? Will this be Dublin's toughest challenge in Leinster for six, seven years in terms of this Mead team? It's hard to know and Kildare for me, you know, I look at them a little bit and I think they are, they remind me a bit of the Mead of last year in the sense that they are bringing through, you know, young young talents, the likes of um, Dara Kirwan who hit six against Offaly, Jimmy Hyland coming into the team as well, looking quite bright and, you know, you still have the experience of Kevin Flynn and Kevin Feely but I do expect me to win this game. You know, Jordan Morris is in tremendous form at the moment. He hit 3-4 against Wicklow. Quite incredible. Uh, Ronan Jones and Brian Menton in the midfield. Very top midfield at the moment. And I would expect them to have too much for Kildare. I think Mead now are looking more physical. You look at them and they look like they've bulked up quite a lot more. Um, they have another year under Andy McEntee. And I expect them to make the final. And Kildare... Although they have been winning in the past couple of weeks, the only kind of worry for me is that they are leaking a lot of points. They are giving away a lot, a lot of opportunities, giving away frees, you know, conceding 16 against Offaly, a team that doesn't normally score as much as they do, was a little bit worrying. So I would expect me to come through and win this by three to four points, but it will be interesting to see, you know, it'll be interesting to see the level that Mead are really at because if Mead are at the level that some people are saying they are, they should win this quite comfortably. So we'll have to wait and see what happens here. And then, of course, you have Mayo and Galway in the Connacht final. And, yeah, this is an interesting one as well because, I mean, what level are Galway at? We don't know. We honestly don't know what level Galway are at. I mean, I don't think we've ever seen a situation ever in the championship where a team has come into a Connacht final having not played a game. Like it's, or you know, coming into a provincial final without playing a game. I don't know if that's ever happened before. Um, you know, if anyone does know if that has happened before, you know, let me know down in the comments below. But this is a very interesting one. You know, Mayo are coming in as the favourites. There's no doubt about it. Um, you know, for me, Mayo have looked very impressive so far in the championship this year. You know, in the league as well. They, you know, they're, they're reminiscent of the great James Horan size that he brought through, you know, in, in his early days in his first stint. I think someone pointed that out in one of the comment sections in one of my videos before. Like, Owen McLaughlin, Paddy Durkin, like, in the wing-back position, look very good. Ushin Mullen, Lee Keegan in a cornerback. They're causing a lot of problems at the moment for teams, and they're overwhelming teams um, with the way they attack because they're getting a lot of numbers forward. German O'Connor run, running off the shoulder. You're having Connor Loftus getting forward at times. They are a very attacking team. The only worrying thing is defensively, 
could they be a little bit suspect, you know, if Paddy Durkin and, and Owen McLaughlin get too far forward against a team like a Dublin or, or something to that extent, could they leave a lot of spaces in behind to be hit on the counter-attack? That's the only problem. And I'm sure Podrick Joyce is looking at this from that kind of point of view and thinking, how do Galway overcome this? How do Galway win this? You know, Galway have just seemed to have this kind of free fall from grace in many ways. You know, people had them as all Ireland favourites, potentially, you know, before a ball was kicked. They were looking like unstoppable before the lockdown and they've come back. They got beat, you know, hammered by Mayo. They got beat, of course, by Dublin as well and a dead rubber in all fairness. And they do have injuries, of course, you know, we have to point that out. Um, you know, obviously Shane Walsh was injured. Ronan Steed was injured. And I think both of them should be in line to come back in. Shane Walsh definitely will be back in the side. Is he fit enough to start? You would expect he is. You know, again, not having that Sligo game is just a massive miss in many ways for ourselves and for Galway as well because I am for Sligo. I mean, look, you know, we would have been able to see a bit more the level that Galway are at. You know, what level is Shane Walsh at? Would Ronan Steed have come off the bench in that game versus Sligo in the midfield? Will he start in this game? Because the midfield battle is going to be very interesting. And, you know, if they have Ronan Steed in there for Galway, I think they will cause a lot of problems for Mayo. Um, obviously Damien Comer you know is injured um, so he won't be available but they do have other talented forwards you know Paul Conroy and Adrian Varley have looked very good Paul Conroy in that game against Dublin looked very good indeed I just wonder that there's a lot of pressure on Galway um, and I think the pressure got to them a little bit in those two league games those two final league games and although Mayo will come in as favourites I still feel like there's a lot of expectancy on Galway and if they lose this game there'll be a lot of people thinking that this season was just a massive failure and that Galway moving in the right direction and coming closer to an All-Ireland was all just a bit of a, you know, it was all just a bit of a farce. But personally, I don't believe that. You know, even if they do lose this game, I think next year they'll come back stronger and they'll, you know, they've shown before that they do have the talent, that they do have the players. Um, and it's going to be interesting. And look, listen, you know, what way do we look at it? Do we look at it in the fact that Galway have a lack of match sharpness, having you know not played against Sligo, having not played in two weeks, or do we look at the fact that Mayo have you know probably come into this game maybe a little bit tired, maybe a little bit jaded, you know, having come through two intense league games, having played two games already in the Connacht Championship, Leitrim and Roscommon. So yeah, look, it's it's going to be interesting. Um, it's going to be interesting to see how it goes. You know, Killian O'Connor is in the form of his life at the moment. He's really looking very bright indeed and um, contributing a lot to play kicking very good points as well um, and of course you're looking at the bench as well you know Mayo have a lot of great options from the bench now Mark Moore and coming off the bench James Carr as well so yeah look listen I think Mayo will win this game by three points um, I think Galway will put it up to them it's going to be interesting to see how Galway play they play very defensive against Dublin Galway will they do that against Mayo with the fact that Mayo opened them up time and time again if Galway go attacking, how do they deal with the same problems they had in the first game? It's going to be interesting. And for Podrick Joyce, you know, I wonder how much sleep he's getting at the moment because he'll certainly be trying to work this out the best way that he can. But I think Mayo will win it. And I think Mayo will book their place in the All-Ireland semi-finals. I can't believe I'm saying that already. It still feels like the championship has already started and we're already talking about, you know, a team going into the semi-finals. But... I suppose that is 2020 and, you know, I do expect Mayo to win and book their place in the semis. Anyway, lads, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up here. Do leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. My name is Aaron and I'll see you in the next one.